everyone, and welcome to my first DIY video. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a slider, but not the kind that actually, you know, where you got to use the felt pads and whatnot. This is actually kind of professional looking. I'm going to show you how to make it for about 25 bucks, uh, a little bit more if you need some of the extra tools, and I'll show you what that is. But this actually has a mounting plate that you can actually put on your tripod as well if you take a look underneath. And um, see, I've got a rubber band over here to keep this thing from sliding around, but if I take this off, you'll actually see so smooth look at that and if you want to see it from the upside down angle some roller wheels just like that okay cool so let's get to showing you how to make this all right first things first let's actually take a look at some of the parts that you're going to need okay uh, I put a listing of everything that you need in the description below, uh, but first of all, what you're going to need to do, and you actually need to go to two different places. Uh, most of the parts you can get over at Home Depot, the rest of it you're going to have to get over at Lowe's. So the first thing that you're going to need are these little trim pieces. Now if you go to Lowe's, you can get this in a four, in a, uh, four foot uh, thing, and I'm actually going to show you how to make a two foot slider. The one that I showed you just a second ago is a four foot. But this is actually a channel um, aluminum. And this is about, uh, I can't think of about six bucks for the four foot. Or if you actually go to Home Depot, you can't actually find that, but you actually have to buy it in eight feet. So cut it down to length. Um, I would really recommend anywhere between two to three feet. And I'm going to tell you why. If you do the four foot, there's going to be some flex there if you actually try to mount it to a tripod. If you want a four foot tripod and you want to put it on the floor, that's perfectly fine. That'll be great and stable. Okay, so the other parts that you're going to need, you're actually going to need some of these mending braces from Lowe's. Okay, they come in packs of four. Uh, you're actually going to need two packs because you need a fifth one for the mounting plate. Uh, two is going to be on the end. Okay, and these are three and a half inch mending plates right there. There's your fifth one. Um, I got this one at Home Depot. This is actually a mending uh, brace for a fence post. Uh, it's pretty thin. It's not super uh, sturdy, but actually that's going to be great. That's going to be your mounting plate. Uh, you're also going to need uh, four half inch uh, nuts over here. Uh, probably another, this is about a um, three quarter inch, uh, half inch screw, and that's actually to mount your camera. Uh, you're also going to need uh, these patio door kits. Okay, take a look at that. That's actually on a bearing, and what makes these so special and what makes it work at all the various different angles is that these are channeled. Okay, and uh, these are about five bucks for a pack of two. You can only get these at Home Depot though. Um, Lowe's will sell a metal one, but you don't really want that. The other thing that you're going to need is, uh, if you want that nice polished look, like uh, the one I was showing you earlier, you're going to need about 20 rivets. And these are medium length, but um, if you want, you can get full length ones. If you don't have a rivet gun, uh, and you're doing a lot of these DIY projects, I actually decided to invest in one. These are about, uh, this whole kit was $17 from Lowe's. Uh, it's a little rivet gun, comes with two different sizes for 3mm or 5mm. Never used one before, but I love how it gives a great finished, polished look. Okay, um, you're also going to need a drill bit, two drill bits actually. One uh, I pick a smaller one just as a starter. The second one is a longer one, uh, so you can actually drill a right size hole. But this gets you started. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is you got to cut this down to the length that you want. Uh, I've already done that, and um, it's pretty simple. Okay, the next step is you're going to have to actually pull these two pieces together. Now I'm going to show you some quick trips as we go through this thing so that way you don't end up making some of the mistakes I made on my very first build. Okay, but the way that this is going to work is these two channels are going to come together like this and we're going to put a mending brace on the top. Okay, one on the bottom, one on the bottom over here as your mounting plate and then I'll show you how to make the, the actual rollers. Okay, so let's get started with the actual build. Okay, you ready? Here we go. First thing, you got to figure out where you want to drill these holes. So, uh, you want to take your mending plate and mark your drill point. One of the tips is, as you build this, if you have a little bit of a change in your angle from one to the other, uh, it's going to squeeze because I'm going to kind of show you this, right? You want it to be perfectly straight. If it goes, this is exaggerated, but if it goes that way, your wheels will either uh, start to squeeze as they roll down the slider or they'll fall off and you don't want either of those to happen. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead, put a couple of little holes. Okay, just like that. That's good, that's one side. All right, so when we put this mending brace on, these rivets will fit nicely inside and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the rest. Okay, we're back. So here's what I've done. I've actually gone ahead and drilled some holes on the other side so you can see. Okay, these are supposed to line up just like that. Okay, uh, but on the other side, I've actually only drilled two and here's why. We're actually going to rivet these two together first and then try to make sure that everything is lined up on this side over here and then we'll get these holes to match exactly and also sometimes your uh, length can be a little bit longer or shorter so you don't want to just go ahead and uh, unless you're absolutely spot on with your cuts uh, you may be slightly off of alignment and that'll also mess you up so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to use a rivet tool if you've never used one before real super simple okay there's these little bumps on on here it's totally up to you which way you want this to face but I'm gonna go ahead and have these facing down so what you do is you just line the mending brace on, you push a rivet, you open this up all the way, and uh, once it's in there, now this is a, a hand tool, you give it one, and I think this one probably will break off after about two pumps, but you'll see it will fasten it very tightly, so you want to kind of adjust as you go along. And there you go, and it breaks off, spits out this little metal piece, Looks almost like a nail. Very cool, right? Throw it away. Okay, and if you take a look, there you go. How does that look? Super nice polish. It does leave a little bump on the end over here. I understand that that might get in the way of the drill when we drill it on the other side, but I'm actually going to show you a little secret. We're going to offset the bottom mending brace just slightly so we don't run into that problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, rivet the other one. And as you can see, I am way over on here. So that's the other reason why I really want to make sure that we actually kind of uh, piece this thing together. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of flex over here. So that gives us a little bit of play. You can always come and clean that up a little bit later. Um, so let's go ahead, grab our measuring tape. Make sure that we're measuring over on this side. We are on the inside here at 6.5 four millimeters, right? Now we know we've got that marked, and when we put that together, that's gonna be spot on, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So now, now that we've got the top part fixed, the rest is gonna be pretty simple because the rest are just going to be supporting brackets. So look how beautiful that looks so far. You guys are doing a great job. Okay, so now what you want to do is just kind of offset your mending brace just a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one here. I'm going to do the other side. And then I'm going to measure a spot in the middle and we're going to do that. And then we're going to be right back because this video is getting really long. So now you're done. So you've got three plates on the bottom, one on each end. You've got your mounting plate over here in the middle. Okay, and everything looks nice and straight and even. So you can see your channels and you got uh, your channels over here. Don't worry about any of the bolts that are sticking out. They're not gonna be a problem at all. So let's move on to the actual sliding plate for your camera to sit on. Okay, so go ahead and grab this. And really the first wheel, the first set of wheels, you can just kind of put anywhere uh, that you want. So go ahead and eyeball it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball it. So the edge of the wheel is against the edge of the plate and the other ones are going to have to come over here but you want to use this as your guide and then we'll line it up on the actual uh, slider itself and get the other ones uh, in there okay so let's go ahead and do that what you gotta do is actually go ahead and figure out where you need to put the other ones okay so if you go ahead and put this into the channel over here uh, go ahead and put it from the bottom side up. So 
it's time to put it together. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you this little trick. Okay. Another tip. So you want to go ahead, get your wheel on for one of the ones. And as you can see, it looks pretty close, but that's okay. And what you can do is you actually put the bottom two together first like this. So this way you can actually slip it in and this gives you now the room and the flexibility to get this wheel on last. And that is it. There you have it. You can see, you can perfect this in any way that you want, but it slides really super smoothly. It's a good snug fit. It's a snug enough fit where you can actually flip this thing upside down and which means you can actually get vertical shots. You know, you can go ahead, do a pulley system and you can go ahead and do it vertically. You can go up or you can go down. Now here's some extra credit points for you. Okay. Now I didn't explain what this was, but if you have one of these and you know what it is, these are fantastic. And this go ahead, goes ahead and completes your professional look. This is just a simple tap. Now I went out and got to, uh, went out to a, a uh, pawn shop and got one for a dollar. And I had this, uh, this, uh, hand bit, uh, but you can go ahead and put this on a drill and that's going to work just fine too. And what this really does is it creates a thread for you so you can actually go ahead and put screws in. So if you have a, even though this is a thin mending brace, as you can see, I can go ahead and thread it. So now, and I'll just back it out. So now when you have a quick release plate that you want to put on it, you can actually go ahead and it screws, this is a half inch bolt, it just screws right in. Ta-da! Okay, and this is the part that will mount to your tripod. So, uh, extra, extra credit if you want to go ahead and do the same thing to one of the end pieces over here, uh, like this. Then you can put a small screw, screw that in, and now you've got a place to put your rubber band, like I had before in my earlier version, to keep this from sliding around. So then you can transport it without any problems at all. All right. Hey guys, that's it. I will try to get a couple of quick shots. It's not going to be with my super nice camera, but just because I'm doing this pretty quickly. Um, and the more time you spend on it, of course, the better the quality. But I think this is pretty good for now. And this should get you exactly the kind of shots that you want to get. And it's smooth, it's quiet, it doesn't have felt, it's cheap, and you'll end up with a couple of really neat tools at the end to continue on with future DIY projects.